When Max Verstappen warned that if he has to drive at 101% every time, it will go wrong one day, it couldn't have proved more prescient. He said that after qualifying for the Spanish Grand Prix, and that's because of how hard he was having to push to extract the maximum performance from the Red Bull RB20 under increasing pressure from his rivals. It proved eerily prophetic, as just eight days later he was unquestionably driving at 101%, if not more, in his unsuccessful attempt to hang on to the lead in the Austrian Grand Prix. That resulted in the collision he caused while battling with McLaren driver Lando Norris, the moment the cracks in Red Bull's performances that he has been covering up were brutally exposed. After the race, Verstappen criticised the team's poor execution. While he was on course for a comfortable victory until a slow pit stop, timed at 6.59 seconds, meant he dropped into Norris's clutches, he was not happy even before that. He felt his first stint was too long, meaning he gave away free lap time in traffic. Then the struggle to get the left rear wheel off at his final pit stop sent him out with Norris right behind, leading to a lockup as he pushed to stay ahead on his outlap, then the ill-fated battle that meant he finished only fifth. Now, Verstappen wasn't blameless in this as his overly aggressive defence caused the collision, but how the Austrian Grand Prix unravelled proved that the cracks appearing in Red Bull's F1 supremacy have been papered over for some time. It's hardly a disaster as Verstappen is still on track to win the World Championship and has won 7 of the last 11 races, 10 out of 14 if you include sprints, but the fact is Red Bull has been prevailing by the skin of its teeth too often, save by a combination of Verstappen's brilliance and, Austria aside, Red Bull's relentlessly good execution trackside, running a car that no longer always has a pace advantage. Make no mistake, Red Bull is under serious pressure and its star driver is making a difference. It's easy to dismiss that as hyperbole. After all, on paper Red Bull and Verstappen are still winning often enough, but Andrea Stella, McLaren team principal, argues that the one constant at the front, even when teams are closely matched, is Max Verstappen. You only have to look at the evidence of the past six races to back up Stella's point. Norris won for McLaren in Miami, albeit with the assistance of the safety car and Verstappen picking up damage. At Imola, Norris pushed Verstappen to the chequered flag. At Monaco, winning was beyond even Verstappen thanks to the car's poor ride, while in Canada Mercedes had the fastest car in dry conditions and Norris lost the lead when McLaren missed the chance to bring him in under the safety car. Spain was a repeat of Imola, with Norris chasing down Verstappen in the final stint. In Austria, Norris could have won the sprint had he covered the inside line at Turn 4 after overtaking Verstappen. And while Verstappen could have taken a relatively straightforward victory in the Austrian Grand Prix, the fact is he didn't. What's worrying for Red Bull is that it could easily have been beaten in every single one of the last six Grand Prix rather than winning half of them. The car itself is still seriously quick, but every last iota of performance needs to be got out of it in order to win against increasingly strong opposition. As Verstappen says, the key is feeling good in the car and working closely with the team to extract everything from it. And that's desperately needed. Sergio Perez's recent drop-off in form throws into stark relief just how much more difficult things have become for Red Bull. Red Bull is still in control, but as Verstappen says, this run of races before the August break is key to Red Bull seeing where it really stands. And while Verstappen can be relied upon to leave nothing on the table, it could paint a worrying picture for Red Bull, not just for the rest of this season, but even more importantly for 2025. So how has Red Bull gone from having a car that won 21 out of 22 Grand Prix last year and dominated the early stages of this season into fighting a rearguard action? To start to answer that, we can look back to Monaco, where the Red Bull struggled badly for ride quality over the bumps and kerbs. That even made life difficult for Verstappen, who made a rare mistake when he glanced the wall at the first corner in Q3. The Red Bull has thrived thanks to running with very high lateral stiffness in the rear suspension. That's given it the control it needs of the platform to produce significant downforce when the car gets close to the ground without hitting big bouncing or porpoising problems. The suspension concept has been there since 2022, designed by Adrian Newey, and it wasn't much of a problem for a long time. That's because Red Bull could raise the ride height to a safer level to ease the savage ride, give away some downforce and therefore performance, but still be ahead because rivals were so far behind. Making that bigger compromise wasn't possible in Monaco this year, where the quickest lap time could be achieved only if the driver lived with the harsh ride, and an easier compromise would have left it even further down the field. That was a nightmare for Perez, and even caught out Verstappen on a weekend where Ferrari was on top. But while Monaco is an outlier in terms of track configuration, the weakness it laid bare has been exposed elsewhere. Canada and Imola, for example, require aggressive curb riding. And even when Red Bull returned to more conventional territory in Barcelona, it was under pressure because rivals, notably McLaren, have closed the gap. As these rules have matured, and teams have worked harder to get the cars to run low consistently to generate downforce, it has become more and more a battle of doing so while achieving a good balance for a wide range of corner speeds. Red Bull can no longer make compromises given that what was once a big downforce advantage has been cut back. 
and with every team battling for the optimum compromise between fast and slow corners, Red Bull is potentially struggling more than some of its rivals, in particular McLaren, which has a car that is a good all-rounder and, as Verstappen puts it, is very solid. And the push to extract more from the Red Bull has made life difficult. As Verstappen admits, there have been some messy weekends and the team cannot afford those. Red Bull is pushing to improve its car in terms of tackling the ride weakness, but it needs to do that without compromising the car's strengths. What's clear is that it's a car that's perhaps a little trickier to get the best out of than that of McLaren. Hence, at a track like the Red Bull Ring, where there's a reasonable range of corner speeds but not as extreme as in Barcelona, Red Bull can have a handy advantage. That was showcased in Austria by the step Red Bull made to get the car into the sweet spot between the sprint race and qualifying proper. Verstappen described the car as feeling a lot better and allowing him to really attack the corners. Verstappen could easily have won in Austria thanks to that. While he struggled in the final stint, he was always going to be at a disadvantage thanks to running used mediums compared to Norris's fresh set in the last stint, but that wouldn't have been a problem without the time lost in the pit stop. But given the difficulty of getting the car into the sweet spot at tracks with a wide range of corner speeds and where curb riding and bumps are a big deal, Verstappen is the one thing standing between Red Bull and far more defeats. And to make life more difficult, it's not just on track that Red Bull is under pressure. The public feud between team principal Christian Horner and Jos Verstappen, Max's father, has been a disruptive subplot for Red Bull this season, and it erupted again during the Austrian Grand Prix weekend. The war between the two had cooled lately, at least in public. When Horner was under intense pressure early in the season amid the fallout from Red Bull dismissing a serious complaint against him, Jos warned of the risk of the team being torn apart because of it. That's far from the only barb Jos has aimed at Horner. He did not participate in the Legends Parade held on Sunday in Austria behind the wheel of a 2012 Red Bull RB8 as planned, with his place taken by former Red Bull Junior and ex Minardi driver Patrick Friesacker. Verstappen told Dutch newspaper De Telegraaf that he had dropped out because he had heard Horner had moved to prevent him from participating. He said he's completely done with Horner and confirmed he could have driven but pulled out. For his part, Horner denied vetoing Jos's participation, but of course that doesn't necessarily rule out Horner having been involved, as rumoured, in making sure Red Bull didn't film when he was on track. As Jos alluded to, this is kindergarten stuff, but it's significant for two reasons. Firstly, Jos and Max are a very close unit, along with manager Raymond Vermeulen. As Max said earlier this year, it's me, my dad and Raymond all together. And while he was careful not to take sides in the ongoing row, he did say it would be weird for him to be on a different side to his father. Verstappen also said in Austria that he understood why Jos felt the way he did about the Legends demo, sending a message by saying the scenario could have been avoided. Secondly, it's clear that there is deep-rooted animosity between Jos and Horner that goes far beyond racing matters. That's the only thing that explains the pettiness of the situation. And it's clear Jos is keen on Max moving elsewhere, perhaps to Mercedes, if Horner stays in position. That's why Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff takes every opportunity to stir the pot. He hasn't completely given up hope of luring Verstappen to the team in 2025, if not 2026, when Mercedes is optimistic of engine supremacy. Verstappen is contracted to Red Bull and said over the Austrian Grand Prix weekend that he will be there next year, but he needed some cajoling through several questions before he said that emphatically. Horner's tried to shrug off Wolf's public comments about wanting Verstappen as rooted in trying to divert attention from Lewis Hamilton's decision to leave for Ferrari, calling it a distraction tactic. And while his joke that if Wolf wants a Verstappen for 2025, Jos might be available was a good one, this is a situation that cannot entirely be made light of. There's a deep-rooted enmity there, and petty and tedious as arguments about demo runs and the like may seem, they are significant, and with it becoming increasingly stressful on track, this all adds to the building tension. So how long can Verstappen's brilliance keep Red Bull on top? Well, potentially for a very long time. He is in a strong position in the Drivers' Championship and Red Bull is in control of the Constructors' battle. However, brilliant as Verstappen is, he cannot change the laws of physics. This defines how quick the car is, and if others are able to make further gains, then he will be lumbered with a disadvantage that is impossible to make up for. Hence the 101% comment. And that's why he's calling on Red Bull to make progress with the car. But don't underestimate Red Bull. When Horner was asked in Austria if he still had the fastest car, he responded that he still has the best team in F1, stressing the combination of car, drivers, engineers, strategists and everyone behind the scenes. Austria aside, he has a point. But as the chasing pack closes in, that only gets you so far. And while that still gives Red Bull an edge when it has a pace advantage or even parity, if it slips behind as the development war continues, then that won't be enough. Verstappen knows it, which is why he's pushing for things to improve. Mercedes knows it, which is why Wolf continues to make noises about the possibility of Verstappen joining. And most of all, Red Bull knows it. 
If Red Bull is outdeveloped by rivals, then that will not only mean it will struggle to keep up its current success rate, but also that the fanciful talk of Verstappen leaving, at least by 2026, could become more realistic. The Austrian Grand Prix, with Red Bull making unusual mistakes and Verstappen proving to be the architect of his own downfall, showed that he can't keep papering over the cracks indefinitely.